When I was uh, eight years old in 1966, my parents moved to Bream Bay and I didn't really know too much about the ocean or surfing, but I just can remember the first moment I saw the Pacific Ocean. It just blew me away, you know, like it was a, a sunny, sparkly, blue water day and, uh, and it just had a big effect on me. I don't really remember the thought process about the whole making surfboards thing, but basically as I was learning to surf, I started learning to make surfboards. So it just, it just happened. I have a, a very close connection or awareness to what's happening when I'm surfing, because when I'm surfing, I'm always thinking about the feelings that come up through my feet. And so the, the shaping and the surfing and what's happening when I'm surfing and when I'm shaping, it's very, very connected. Like when you're shaping, you're thinking about and, and particularly with these hot curl boards, you're really thinking about how the water's moving over the, over the board as you're shaping it. You're very, very mindful of that. And when you're surfing, it's the same thing. It's like how the water's moving over the shape of the board and how the shape of the board is moving through the water. So this is a nine foot hot curl uh, finless surfboard. And it's, uh, the idea of it is to take uh, where the uh, some of the early surf pioneers on the North Shore of Hawaii left off. In the 1930s, uh, the surfboard evolved pretty much the state of art, state of the art surfboard was the hot curl. And the idea was that as, as their surfing evolved and progressed, they needed to surf, you know, steeper, more challenging bowling waves. And they were having trouble with the flat planks that they were riding sliding out of the face of the wave. So as the story goes, in desperation, they had a bit of a meeting about it and took to their wooden boards with uh, axes and draw knives and cut the plan shape in, pulled the plan shape right back into this, this drawn in tail. And then they also um, cut this rolled V shape that you can see in the tail here. And their boards must have looked fairly similar to this. And what they found when they paddled back out is they could take off on a wave, drop into the wave, and the tail of the board would engage with the curl, and, and, and the board would just hold its line and they could actually surf on quite a steep angle along the wave, you know, very close and in the pocket of the wave, which was like a revolution. It must have been amazing for them. So they dubbed the board the hot curl because they could ride it in the hot curl of the wave. So, you know, that's very, it's always been very intriguing to me and I've, I've always been aware of the hot curl. So, um, you know, 80 years has gone by and I've, I've kind of followed some of, the, some of the master shapers from around about that era that were actually there where they have done sort of like historic replicas and you know real beautiful art piece wood boards so I've always really admired looking at what they've done um, mostly because of the shape it's a very very sexy shape and but also looking at the the craftsmanship and the woodwork that they've put into them so this is a modern version of a 1930s hot curl finless board and the interpretation of it from from my shaping experience is the board is basically made up of two different bottom contours and they are completely opposite. So the forward section of the board is quite a deep concave dish and the rear portion of the board is totally the opposite, it's quite a steep convex. So you've got two completely opposite bottom contours that have to flow together and uh, that's been part of the of the of the challenge uh, shaping them and one of the things that's really helped with that mix is I've incorporated this trine rail which um, I first started using in, a, in, a, in about 1988 and it's been a real feature of my shaping ever since and I've found that that chine beveled rail has really been a, a big ingredient in bringing those two contours together and making the board work. So the idea is the, the surfer rides very forward on the board and with the surfer being forward there's no weight on the tail so that tail can just float and the water flowing over it is what holds it in and gives the board control and stability 
and meanwhile the surfers very forward going really fast and controlling the board with subtle um, weight shifts from one foot to the other and I quite often ride parallel starts um, and just by leaning on the inside or the outside rail you can steer the board up and down the wave and you know um, you can do like little little cutbacks and, and things like that and it's it's an amazing sen sensation paddling into a wave knowing that there is no fin and it's all about you the board and the wave and yeah so it's very it's very important to, to pick a nice entry into the wave and as you stand up you feel the tail lock into the wave it's like the board and the wave have a conversation and they they figure out what they're going to do and you're the passenger and you feel that and then you go with it so it's very it's it's a it's a very connected to the to the energy source kind of a feeling you can't overpower the situation you flow with it and, and it's, 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 it's really a neat, neat feeling. This is another hot curl surfboard, another finless surfboard. This is my short board, so this is my six foot version of the hot curl. And it's the model that I call the re-evolution, because with the shorter series of boards, I'm wanting to take the, the concepts of the hot curl and see how far I can go with re-evolving it into a much more modern, format and, and see if we can take that whole hot curl thing further into the future. So it has the same uh, use of the three C's, it's got the very concave forward area and the very convex uh, rear section and it's got the chine rail. Um, probably the most obvious thing with this is the ratios of of the uh, of the convex to the con to the concave has changed, so the concaves come further back, and the convex is shunted further towards the tail. And you'll notice that this is actually quite flat sided. It's not as rolled as the nine footer, and just looking for crisper water release, and just to see how far I can push it with developing a board that's got more turning speed and more um, more kind of short boardy type in the pocket surfing and still with plenty of hold with, with the water flowing over the tail and holding it in place. So this is the shorter end of my hot curl quiver so if I'm short boarding I'm riding this board. If I'm long boarding I'm riding the nine, the nine footer which, and the 9 foot is really more like a 9.6 in, in normal board terms. So this one, once again, same thing, you ride it very far forward and feet much closer together than, than, than a normal surfing stance and steer the board by applying pressure to each rail. People that see the hot curl boards are obviously intrigued. Um, some people are quite bewildered, but there's definitely an intrigue, and, and it seems to be catchy. Um, people are drawn to them because they're so different looking, and, and I think in some way they capture, capture the imagination. So as far as um, who's going to be riding these boards, I think it's a natural uh, assumption to make that people will be drawn more easily to the longboard version. Than, than the shorter version. But it's really a matter of getting the boards under people's feet so they can feel firsthand what I'm feeling and just how addictive it is. I see myself as a surfer. And I see myself as a surfer as a lifetime thing. And my, my life is, um, it's set up around being a surfer. And I've tried to think who would I be, what would I be, how would I be if I didn't surf? And I've got nowhere to start to even try and comprehend that. So it's a big thing, you know, and it brings so much joy and it's very grounding. It's, uh, you know, it's healthy. And I just, I think it, it really taps you into the environment. It really makes you appreciate nature and, and peacefulness and just you know, sinking into the water and, and, you know, the whole atmosphere, like the sun's going down or the sun's coming up and, and, and the bird life and everything that's going on. 
out in that liquid, which is the ocean. It's, it's just, it's pretty mind-boggling when you stop to think about it.